Uh, are we rolling already? Well, then I should probably get the proper t-shirt on. <laughs> Welcome to the Underwater Filming Tips series. My name is Vanessa Karaker and this is episode number three. In this episode, we're going to be talking about your shutter speed and why it's different between underwater photography in comparison to underwater filmmaking. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll be uploading future episodes on a regular basis, so hit that bell button to be notified when we upload the videos. Let's dive right into it. So how does shutter speed work? And why is it so important? What we're going to discuss in this video is not purely meant for underwater filmmaking and underwater photography. This actually goes way back into filmmaking history. So you can apply this above water and underwater. We just want to give you a few tips how to choose the right shutter speed and what you have to pay attention to. So first off, what is a shutter? A shutter is essentially blinds in front of your camera sensor that open and close and that define how much light hits the camera sensor. If I were to take off the lens here, that is the shutter opening and closing. So if you set your shutter to a fast shutter speed, it will open and close very fast. Then just very little light hits the sensor. And if it open and closes very slow, the sensor is exposed to the light for a longer period of time. So the image is going to be brighter. The longer the exposure is, the longer the shutter is open, the more light hits the sensor, the brighter the image will be. So how does this work and what does it mean? Why is it so important how much light hits the camera sensor? Essentially, the shutter will define the amount of motion blur that is captured in your image. With a very slow shutter speed, you're going to have a lot of motion blur. With a very fast shutter speed, on the other hand, you're going to sort of freeze the moment, freeze the frame, and you're going to eliminate all the motion blur. An example that everybody knows for slow shutter speed is, for example, when you're capturing moving water. So let's say you have a waterfall running, any kind of movement of the water. If you have a very slow shutter speed, that means the shutter is open for a very long period of time, you're going to eliminate all of that movement and it's going to make a silky smooth looking image. It's also commonly used for astrophotography when you're shooting stars in the night sky and then you can see these star trails. This is done with long exposure photography, which means a slow shutter speed. Also very well known is night photography when you're filming like a cityscape and you have all the cars moving through the image, pulling these light trails behind them. And on the contrary, you use a very fast shutter speed if you want to freeze the moment. For example, in sports photography, when there's a lot going on, you want to just capture that split second where everything is happening and you want to have everything crisp and sharp. If you transfer this to underwater, you want to maybe capture all the action in a bait ball and there's all of the animals coming in the frame and you don't want to use a slow shutter speed and blur out all of the movement. You want to capture every single individual in that frame. So you're going to use a very fast shutter speed for that. But in this video, we're going to be talking about shutter speed for filmmaking and not for photography. If if you're interested in underwater photography, stay tuned. We're going to be uploading videos on that topic in the future. So let's talk about shutter speed for video. Now you know that a shutter is a mechanical action happening in front of your camera sensor. But with video, you're capturing, for example, 25 or 30 frames a second. So are you going to hear 25 or 30 times this shutter per second? The short answer is gladly not. With video, what happens is when you start to film, the shutter is already open. In this case, the electronic shutter takes over. So now you know everything and we can end this video. No, I'm, ju I'm just kidding. There's a bit more to shutter speed than that. For example, when you're shooting with like a digital camera, is the 180 degrees shutter angle rule. This rule actually comes from the old filming days when you used to shoot on proper film and not on digital media like SD cards. So how do you apply the 180 degrees shutter angle rule? Well, it's quite simple. Essentially, it's just set the shutter to be double your frame rate. The shutter is usually displayed as one slash a number. Some camera manufacturers just have the number. So it looks something like this. At the bottom of the frame, you can see a 50. This means that the shutter open and closes at 1 50th of a second. And usually they're dedicated dials to change the shutter speed. So you can see the dial at the front here. And with this camera, it's a, it's a top dial. If you can't change the shutter speed on your camera with a dedicated dial, then just search online how to change the shutter speed in your specific camera model. Either way, I would recommend you to set the camera to M to full manual or full manual film mode. 
In manual mode, you can set all your settings accordingly. So you can set your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, your white balance, and your frame rate and everything else. We'll get to all of these settings in the future and how these settings are all connected to each other. Now let's get back to how to set the proper shutter speed. So with a frame rate of 25 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 1 50th of a second or 1 over 50. If you're filming, for example, at 30 frames a second, then it should be 1 60th of a second. And if you're filming 60 frames a second, it should be 1 over 120, so 120th of a second. The reason for this is the amount of motion blur that is captured with these settings resembles the motion blur that you can see with your eyes. It's a natural motion blur that you actually see and it makes the film look more cinematic, more natural and less digital. And even if you're filming, for example, slow motion at 120 frames per second, your shutter speed needs to be double that frame rate. So your shutter speed for 120 frames a second would be 240th of a second. Otherwise, it's just gonna look unnatural. Now, can you cheat and extend these ranges? The short answer is yes, you can, but it depends. You might get away with a slightly slower shutter speed, but don't overdo it. If you're filming 25 frames a second and your shutter speed is one over 50, try not to go below one over 40, because then it's gonna start getting blurry and the motion blur is gonna be so much and it's gonna be jittery. I would not go below double the frame rate. And on the other hand, you can actually increase the shutter speed, so make it faster. And there's a variety of reasons why you would want to do that. For example, your image is slightly overexposed and your ISO is already set to its lowest, like 100, and you don't want to change your aperture because let's say you have an aperture of f2.8 and that gives you this nice and shallow depth of field or okay how it's called. So the only way to bring down the whole exposure of the image is for example to take an ND filter. An ND filter works like sunglasses for the camera. With an ND filter you can change the exposure of the image but underwater you're not gonna have an ND filter unless you have a camera that has a built-in ND filter. The only other way to bring down the exposure of the image is to increase the shutter speed. This will let less light hit the sensor and darken down your image to the desired exposure. Now you don't wanna go all crazy and cranking up that ISO to one one thousandth of a second. You can crank up that shutter speed to let's say one four hundredth of a second, but anything beyond that is gonna look a bit unnatural. It just depends on what look and feel you're going for. But be aware that you're gonna lose the whole natural looking motion blur. So cranking up that shutter speed is gonna make every frame look crisp and sharp. And having a high shutter speed is maybe a look that you're really going for. For example, in action movie scenes, this effect is being used a lot and makes all the action look more dramatic. Taking this to underwater, maybe you're in the bait ball and you have all the action going on and maybe you want to transfer a feeling to your viewer that they're right in the moment, in the bait ball, with all the action happening. Then you may choose a higher shutter speed so it will look more dramatic and real. Having a fast shutter speed brings your viewer into the scene, into the action, rather than looking from the outside when you have a slower shutter speed that has a natural looking motion blur. In fact, let me just show you right away because then you can see the difference of a fast shutter speed versus a slower shutter speed. Now I'm recording with 25 frames a second with a shutter speed of 100 of a second, not 50. So I'm not using the 180 degree shuttle angle rule. The reason for this is because the Panasonic GH5 that I'm filming on has a very bad autofocus and as I'm filming this alone I don't have anybody to check the focus behind the camera so I have to rely on the autofocus working because it does work better with a higher shutter speed. But in general if I'm filming underwater or if I'm filming anything else I will use the 180 degree shutter angle rule. So let, let's see how it looks like if I crank up the shutter speed to 1 400th of a second. So I have the Panasonic GH5 connected to my iPad and I can see and change all the settings here. So I'm just going to change the shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. Now the exposure is going up, the shutter is slower, so it's letting more light hit the sensor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring down the ISO a bit. So now if I wave my hand, you can see the natural motion blur. And if I crank this ISO now up to 1 over 400 or 1 400 of a second, the image will be darker. To compensate this, I have to increase the ISO or I have to increase my light source. In this case, I'm just gonna increase the ISO to make it simple. So now if I move my hand again, then you're gonna see it's a lot crisper and it looks sharper. You can see every finger now, right? So this is 1 400 of a second. You can see that here on the bottom side.
So that's essentially it. And it really just depends on what look you're going for. There's no right and wrong. Just remember not to go below double your frame rate. So I hope this brings a bit of clarity to you how to set the proper shutter speed for video. And if you're feeling a bit uncomfortable setting all your camera settings manually, well, sure, just leave it in auto mode and then the camera will decide what's the best shutter speed for you. I would recommend getting used to setting everything manually. It's a little details that will improve your filmmaking skills above and underwater. And I can assure you after a while, all of these things just come natural to you. You don't even have to think about what frame rate or what shutter speed you have to set. It's like driving a car. At the beginning, it's a lot to handle, but once you get to know all the settings and what the settings are actually for, you can set them and you don't have to think about them anymore. So train and learn how to use all of these settings. And I have a little extra tip for you. If you have custom settings on your camera, use those. You can preset your camera to all the settings you need and then you can save them to that custom button. Usually they're called C1, 2 or 3. So in this camera, at the top, you can see them. 1, 2 and 3. And that will save you a hell of a lot of time underwater and you don't have to think about, oh, did I set the frame rate right? Did I set the ISO right? So you can preset everything before the dive. So I set C1 to 4K, 25 frames a second, 1 50th of a shutter speed, ISO 200 and aperture 2.8. And then I will set C2 to 50 frames a second, 100 of a second shutter speed, also 4K. And then on C3, I would have slow motion, let's say HD, and then I have 120 frames a second and one over 240 of a shutter speed and the according ISO and aperture that I desire. So underwater I just have to switch in between these three knobs. So the only things I have to worry about underwater is is my exposure right then I might have to tweak it and reset my white balance for every meter that I go down or up. But we're gonna get into white balance and all of the other stuff in upcoming videos. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, please share it and comment below if you have any questions and we will get back to you. Safe diving and I will hopefully see you in the next episode.